Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at reusing our code through the use of functions. Functions are going to allow us to declare a block of code as reusable. You can think of this sort of like you create a solution to a problem. Maybe your problem is you want a um, like a user's username to have the first letter capitalized every time you see it in your application. Instead of having to go through and write the code to capitalize that username every time, you write it once, put it into something called a function, and then any time you need to use it, you can just use the capitalize first letter of username function. An easier example to show you out of the box is something where we, let's say, need to print something multiple times. We did this previously in the for loop section or the while loop section. So here, let's just go ahead and let's say we want to print hello world five times. So our first approach might be something like let's put hello world and then let's just do this five times. Now, of course, this doesn't scale very well. What happens if we want to change this from hello world to like happy birthday? We would then have to go through and change every single one of these to happy birthday. And that's of course going to take us quite some time. And we, we aren't always guaranteed to have all of these in the same location. So then we would have to go through each of these files, for example, find where we're printing happy birthday or happy or hello world and changing it to happy birthday. And then, you know, someone like me, that's not very smart might come through and just put in like hello birthday instead. And then how do you find where that hello birthday is? So of course you don't want to do that. You want to make sure that you're only changing things in one place. So what we could do is we could say like, um, instead of just, you know, using the same string, we could say like, uh, let's do uh, hello world is equal to hello world. And then we could do print or sorry, puts hello world. And now we only have to change this variable uh, one time. So we can print this five times. And then if we want to change this to happy birthday, we just have to change this one to happy birthday, All right? So that's another option we have available to us. But okay, we don't want to have to do this five times every time. How else can we do it? Well, bef like before, we could say five dot times do, and then we could print hello world. So now we're doing this five times in one location. We can, of course, test this by commenting these out and then running uh, Ruby main dot RB inside of this file. And we can see this gets printed out five times. So this is another option, but sometimes we don't just want to do something five times. Let's say, for example, that we want to have a function that squares numbers for us. So anytime we have a number, let's say number is equal. Oh, let me actually leave this here for the sake of the notes. And then we'll say uh, something like number is equal to, I don't know, five. And then we want to square this, right? So we could do something like puts number times number, something like that. And now if we run Ruby main.rb, you can see we get 25 because squaring a number is just multiplying it by itself, you know, one time. But this is another one of those instances where maybe we don't want to just use this number. Maybe we have like another number, right? This is equal to four. And we want to also have this one get squared. We don't want to have to type another number twice every time we want to square it. That would be way too much work. So let's implement a function to actually square some numbers. To do this, we can use the def keyword, and then we can say square, because we want to call it square. It then needs to take in something. So that's going to happen inside of these parentheses. In these parentheses, we're going to take in some type of number. We'll say number to be squared. And then we can just, I don't know, let's put the number to be squared times itself and then end. And now if we run this, we won't actually see anything because we have this function defined somewhere, but we're not actually using it yet. So let's actually use this function. We can do that by just doing square and passing in five. We can run this and then we'll see 25 right here. 
The reason we're seeing 25 is because we have the puts inside of the square function. So now anytime we want to run this, we can do it like this. We can change this to four. We can change this to three. We can run all of these. We get 25, 16, and nine, which is of course three times three, four times four, five times five. This allows us to gradually increase the complexity of our application and do so in a way where we have pieces of code that are reusable building blocks for us. This won't always be as simple as squaring. We could also have something like a def for multiply. Let's say multiply, and this will take in two numbers. We'll have the first number, first number, and the second number. So this is just a way to multiply two numbers together. We can then puts the first number times the second number. If we then do multiply five comma five, this is inherently going to give us the same thing as the square function. But we can of course change this. Let's change this to two times three, which will give us six. And now when we run this, we can see we get back six. The way that this works is the first number we pass in here before the comma goes into this first number. The second number goes into this second number. And we can call these whatever we want to. We can say this one is apples instead of second number. And then we can just puts first number times apples, which would then give us two for the first number and then three for the apples. And then two times three is of course six. I just like calling them first and second number so it's a bit clearer. And these are typically called arguments or parameters. The parameters of a function allow us to have multiple different variables that we then use inside of that function. This will not always be as simple as multiplication. You can think of this as maybe you have 20 lines of code here that do something super cool, and you really need to have these, these variables in the function to be able to do that really cool thing. In that case, you just define your variables up here they then become whatever the values are because when you when you use the function or when you invoke the function, you then tell it what those variables are. But instead of doing something like first number equals two and second number equals three, you, you just pass in those values and then comma separate them. And then Ruby or whichever language you're using is usually smart enough to say, all right, this two in this first comma slot goes to this first variable, and this three goes to the second variable. But let's say we have a different scenario. I need to print out a number. I don't need to print it out here. What I actually wanna do is do something like, let's multiply two plus three times five. What we could do here is we could say, multiply two plus three, and then we could do this times five. And let's remove this two comma three. If we now run this, we'll get two plus three, which is five times five, and five times five is 25. But maybe we don't wanna do it like this. What we can instead do for this is say, uh, I don't know, like result is equal to two plus three. And then we could pass in, which is what you call it when you do this, result as the first argument here. This would then give us the same result, no pun intended, without needing to do that ugly math inside of the function. There's other ways we can do this though. Instead of doing result of two plus three, we can just pass in three for this multiply, and we can say result equals multiply three comma five. Now this will return 15, but not in the current state. And you can see we get the squiggly line here. If we run this, we'll get 15 printed out, but this result here, if we try to put the result, will be empty. It's this empty line right here is what this puts result is. So we're not actually getting it back from multiply. To do that, we need to get rid of this puts. In Ruby, without that puts there, we then get that, that number sent into this result variable, and then we can use this. In other languages, what's actually happening here is you have a keyword return before this, which is saying return whatever this is, which is gonna be three times five. So we're returning three times five, which is 15. Result is then 15. 
And then we can even do something like your multiplication result was, and then by using our neat little uh, pound symbol and our braces here, we can put the variable into this, this string. And then when we print this, we can see your multiplication result was 15. So when we use the return keyword, we get back this value, and then we can store it inside of a variable that we can then use later. This isn't actually required in Ruby, so you'll often just see the last line in a function just be like the variables themselves. I'm not a fan of this because I like to explicitly see the word return there because my brain just associates the word return with actually returning. And when it sees something like this, I don't, I don't fully immediately jump to this is being returned. I would say when you're starting off, it's probably better to just keep those returns there. And then over time, as you get more and more used to using this language, you can start to phase these out. Because when you're just making simple code like this with multiplication or addition, there's no real chance other people will see it. So it just allows you to be clearer to yourself about what you're doing. You can alternatively just put in a comment that says, this is what will uh, return. Now that covers defining a function. It covers passing in arguments or parameters to that function, printing out the result inside of that function and then reusing it, as well as returning the value and then using that returned value further on in your program. There's of course plenty more we can do with functions if we're given the ability to, but for now I'm gonna leave you here because this allows us to move on to some more complex topics in the future where we can start to address some of the more advanced functionality. So for now, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.